that, I'll call the meeting to order at, uh, I got 7.01 on my computer clock. Can I just ask who's taking notes? That's the first order of business. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so since uh, Katie is uh, not with us tonight, uh, do we have any volunteers to take notes? You want me to do it? Well, somebody has to do it, so. I don't, I mean, I can do it. I don't mind. Okay, There's great. There's a chance I may have to duck out because I don't have uh, super child care tonight, so. That's okay, I'll do it. But yes, this time, thank you. Well, we'd better get through all the important stuff before you duck out. Uh, do we have anybody from the public? I'll assume that's no. No. Um, approval of uh, last meeting's minutes. Do we have any um, questions or concerns on last meeting's minutes? Do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes from last meeting. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Approved. Meetings minutes are approved. Okay. Um, here's our normal stuff. Nancy, um, you have the floor. Okay. Um, I see the feasibility study comes later, so I'll just give you a a kind of quick update. Um, I am happy to say that it's relatively quiet on the first floor. Um, only a modicum of drilling going on. Um, the eight foot by five foot hole that was in children's up until the last few days has been filled. So at this point, most of the work on the first floor has been complete. They're still, they've had to do some retiling of um, public washrooms as there were cracks that ran right down the middle um, and some other kind of, yeah, there's cracks everywhere. So um, at this point, the work around the keyhole area, both inside and outside in children's is still ongoing. That's the place where they had to put entire, you know, entirely, it was a full depth repair. So that was a, you know, new beams underneath and everything else. So that work continues. We are waiting to hear about what happens with the upstairs. So what that means is that there are one of four possibilities for the upstairs. We could have no need for any repair, leave it all alone. That's first. Second could be repairs in some small repairs, small cracks in small areas, small enough that they just need some epoxy and they would um, take the carpet up, epoxy what needs to be done, put it right back down. Third case scenario is a little more complex. Um, probably more likely there that there would be some uh, cracks that need repair in a few selected areas where they would probably be severe enough that they would have to recarpet at least some areas of the upstairs. So take the carpet off, you know, buff the cracks, grind down the concrete, do the epoxy, do the glass stitching like they did downstairs and put some new carpet in those areas. And the fourth case scenario is that it's potentially bad enough so that we would have to remove all of the carpet upstairs and do the whole thing we did downstairs, which is take all the carpet off, repair everything, um, move all the bookshelves, move all the books, do the whole thing, and then put the put new carpet back in. So we've been waiting and waiting for the structural engineer to finish his analysis of upstairs to see what that's going to be. I'm, we're expecting it pretty much yesterday, pretty much any day now. Um, I was in Sunday working on some budget things or attempting to, and um, at that time there were our Sharice, our project manager, and some folks from the construction team were in doing some vibration tests still. We had, when we had everything off downstairs, all the carpet and, and the furniture out, um, the degree of vibration when someone would just walk across the floor in, especially in the back area of our building was something that was of concern. And so they're still doing tests on that to see if they need to add any poles and pillars to make that more stable. So it does seem to us to be a lot more stable 
um, we're not before literally we could have we had one of our staff members that maybe weighs 100 pounds it would you know walk across the floor and you could feel it jiggle so um, still do, still doing some testing but uh, the carpet looks good a lot of the areas look good um, probably the most exciting area is still the I think it was just happened after our last meeting that we that the teen area we now have an expanded children's and teens area so. Um, I had jokingly commented all through the construction to the construction team that wouldn't it be great if you guys could just knock down a few walls for us as long as you're here in the teen area. Um, actually, the old computer lab area downstairs because we hate that area for a computer lab for various reasons. And it's, you know, it was dark, it was enclosed. Um, we had some bad behavior there. And so what happened was the, stru the structural engineer found that the teen collection weighed too much for the space it was in and needed to be spread out. And uh, so it wouldn't cause any more problems with the floor. So it was cheaper to for them to knock the walls down in the old computer lab and make our teen area for us than it would have been to double reinforce the floor. So, um, so we have a, a newly expanded teen area, which we think is awesome. So um, other than that, kind of business as usual, curbside is still incredibly busy. We're getting a ton of of uh, questions about when we are going to be open. We are planning quite a bit of summer reading program. Uh, most of it is still online and some of it is outside. We are going, we are preparing a tentative opening plan, not with dates on it, because we don't know when that'll be for us, but kind of um, going backwards from what we did when we were closed. So looking at, you know, if the COVID, if COVID numbers are this, this is what we plan to do, et cetera. And um, working on the budget. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing to stay busy right now. A, a couple questions, Nancy. If, mm -hmm. if it's the worst case and you have to do to the second floor what you did to the first floor, does that push back your midsummer opening? I don't know. Um, it may or may not, depending on how bad the repairs would have to be or how complex, but I don't think that anyone, even if we have to do, it's not we, but the construction folks, even if construction has to do quite a bit of repair upstairs, I don't believe any of us believe it'll be the extent that it was downstairs as far as the severity of the cracks. And, you know, there were multiple cracks downstairs that needed epoxy and stitching and metal plates. And, you know, it was a five or six step process. Um, we're also looking if that does happen, the worst case scenario, um, there are some moving companies that have kind of these hydraulic, kind of like a hydraulic jack thing, but it's long and they can actually lift up up to a 30 foot library shelf with the book still on it, move it back. You can carpet and repair and then plunk it back down without ever taking the books off the shelf. So multiple options, which obviously, you know, taking the books, taking all the books off of all of those shelves upstairs, you know, 84 inch shelving holds a lot of materials. And that's what's the most time consuming is taking everything off the shelves, trying to keep it in order and moving it back. So well, hopefully not a big delay, but we're, we're still waiting to hear the, there are multiple calculations going on by the structural engineers. And um, we have those four foundations I talked about before that are downstairs. And apparently they're not exactly above each other upstairs either. So we still have four different kind of platforms upstairs. So di different thicknesses of floor, um, a few funky things going on, so. And then can you, if it's bad upstairs, can you still operate the first floor or is it too dangerous? I don't know yet. So it's, I don't think it's a matter of being structurally unsound or, or it being a dangerous situation. I think it's just more, it is really, really loud and really, really smelly and really, really nasty. So um, as far as having patrons in the building, then um, you can't hear anything. I mean, you can't. If you, we've we've spent a couple of months dealing with it, but we were choking on dust, and and you know you can't hear anything. So, just depends. But you know, we're hoping it's not that long. We're we're kind of itching to be open as soon as possible. So. Can I ask a question too? And sure. Sorry, forgive me if I missed this in the previous uh, minutes, but so is all the funding for this coming out of your budget or is it coming no, out not of at the all. 
Oh, good. No, this was a this is a 2018 um, uh, bond measure. Okay. So no, there was um, I, I don't remember the exact number. I don't know if Tim does. It's two point something million dollars that was allocated toward library infrastructure repair. So as far as I know, last time I talked to the project managers, we were still under budget. So. Yeah, there, I don't remember the number either, Nancy. But there was a there was sufficient contingency reserve. Yeah. For these kinds of you know. Mm -hmm. uh, possibilities so yeah and so then if if in the eventual um plan that you're in the process of coming up with in terms of library expansion this like investment into this space isn't going to tie you to that space in yeah. any way like just it isn't but you know I, no but on the other hand you know even if we were to decide to build a new library or be part of that the stem and steam complex or something like that that's going to be years down the road i mean it's just you know I, i've been in new building projects if we you know we're not anywhere near anything at this point if we if we you know decided on it today it'd be five years minimum before you were you know even thinking about being inside of the building so we're going to be in this building for a while and um, I think, you know, the, the intent was to make it structurally sound, but it actually looks really, with the new carpet and it's all been freshly painted and, you know, some areas we've moved things around and kind of tried to refurbish some things while we're, while we're at it. And I think it looks really nice. Great. Great. Any other questions for Nancy on this one? Okay. And do you have anything else? Um, on your general director's report, Nancy? Um, it's mostly about feasibility studies, so and that's a separate category. So okay, so I'll I'll just push on. Thanks. Um, friends of the library report. Yes. Um, the friends met uh, March, they were supposed to meet March 24th, 2021, but they it was canceled due to the shooting at the Boulder King Supers. Um, I did receive a little bit of sales reports, so I'll update you on that. Uh, the bookshop sales for February were $46.63. Online sales for February were $545.75. The gift shop sales were at $64.51, and there were no sales to that DreamWorld Books company. Um, since it was canceled, there, were, uh, there was an outstanding funding request that um, we needed to address or that the board needed to address. And then also another one came in. So the, they passed an email around and took an email vote and both of them were passed. First was a request for $8,200 from Claire Studholm for the summer reading program. The other request was from Penny Burris for $2,240 to expand the library of things and renew the software that's needed to track, reserve, and check out those materials. So both of those were approved. There was a meeting scheduled for April 28th, uh, which occurred while I was out of town. So I have no report on that meeting. So and that's it. Any questions for Kathy? Okay, seeing no hands. Um, Councilman Waters, do you have anything for us tonight? I, I know you're just dying to hear a full, complete report on everything the city council has been up to, but but I'll but I'll but I'll wait to see if you have questions or or anything you need from me, because I think the real interesting uh, topic on this agenda is the feasibility study and what comes next. The only the only thing I would say from a from, from as your liaison is that I, um, I was fortunate enough to be invited by library staff to attend uh, a little event uh, last week um, that was the staff's expression of their appreciation for Nancy and her leadership during uh, the pandemic, the, the remodeling and all that is associated with it. And it was a fun hour or so to spend in the library, getting a chance just to peek in on the staff and their connection with their director and um, and their appreciation for her leadership. So uh, good on you, Nancy. It was, it's well-deserved. It was fun to be there and, and be part of the, the acknowledgement and celebration of your leadership. Thank you. It was a big surprise. They faked a meeting. So <laughs> Jason and Donald said, we have to meet with you right away about computer stuff. <laughs> and I thought, what? and I said, well, why don't we just go meet in the conference room? There's more room. And they're like, no, you have to go to your office. 
<laughs> so they were it was very nice. They made it they made me a great video. So wonderful and well deserved. Thank you. I have a question for you, uh, Councilman, but I'll I'll hold off on that till um, we get through the feasibility study. That's okay. Mr. Chairman, I show up to these meetings hoping you'll have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I I'll take that positively. Uh, Nancy, you want to update us on the feasibility work? Sure. Um, Mark participated and our our um, library friends, President uh, Prudence also participated in the interviews for our consultants. We had three firms interview. Um, one was a firm that was an offshoot, uh, like Library Strategies, a firm from Minnesota. One was um, Annie Seeger of Seeger Consulting that I had worked, who I had worked with previously in Bellingham, Washington. And the other one, um, was Wember Inc, who is an owner's rep firm who has worked with many libraries in this area. So um, interviewed all three of them, asked them a series of questions. Um, it, was, it was almost unanimous. We chose Annie Seeger of Seeger Consulting and we have the um, purchase order through purchasing, which is a lot faster than it happened last time. And the contract should be out to Annie. She is she is so excited uh, about working on this project that she had contacted me already and said, "Do you think it'll take a long time for the contract? Do you think I could get a an authority to proceed before before we have the contract?" So, so I know she's already gathering some information. So, um, the series of questions was pretty telling. I think that we asked and we really emphasized um, some different areas than we had for the first consultant. You know, we ended up after the first study with about a hundred pages of various stuff, info that was gathered by both library staff and the first consultant, but it really wasn't synthesized, synthesized in any way. So um, the objective this time is to take the information that there was when we gathered it. Um, I know Annie's gone through it with a fine tooth comb and she said she's found some holes that she thinks need to be filled by, by some more additional meetings and community surveying. And at that point, we're ready to do, or she's ready to do with our some of our input, some financial modeling. So looking at those level of service standards we talked about before, as far as space and staffing and technology and, and those various topics, um, seeing where we compare to those level of service standards and then seeing where the peer libraries compare to those levels of service, service standards. And then, you know, creating those scenarios that say, if we need X amount more space, you know, this is what it this is what it would take uh, financially, and this is a, these are some of the mechanisms by which we could get there. Um, the other question, of course, is governance. It's you know, looking at different models of governance, looking at um, remaining a municipal library, looking at what it takes to be a district library, looking at what it takes to be a hybrid, more similar to um, Cooter River, for example, um, where they have a district library at this point, but contract back with the city for um, HR facilities, facilities maintenance, several other um, aspects of running a library. So, looking at governance, looking at looking at those financial models, and then coming up with um, some presentations for our council. That, that say, you know, this is this is what needs to happen um, if you if you decide that you need to move forward into a different a level of providing library service. And I think one thing that impressed us in her interview was when she said that you know everyone needs to realize that um, status quo is a is a conscious choice that people can make, but it will eventually lead to degradation of service. So, you know, we, we're at the point after the first study where we know we're. 750 to a million dollars short of where we should be every year. And that's for now, not for the future even. And so looking at, um, you know, if the library continues to be underfunded like libraries in most areas, then at some point service will suffer. You know, you can only do more with less until you do less with less. So I think that's where we are, but very interested in, in jumping in. I don't think it'll take more than a few months for her to do this. Um, I know she's really efficient because I've worked with her before. So um, I did speak with 
um, Wimber, which is the, the local consultants that's out of Fort Collins, the ones that are the owners reps, and they they followed up just to see what they what they might have done differently or better. Um, interviewing, I'm always happy to do that with an individual or or a firm. So, I think they're still interested in in the project because we're close to home and keeping in touch with the, us in the future. But I don't know if you had anything else to add, Mark. But we should be in uh, hopefully within the next few weeks. We should be into the study. Now, the only thing I would add is that based on the um, request for quotation that, that you put out, which I thought was very thorough, that um, the winning bidder probably answered those questions more directly than the mm -hmm. other two. Mm -hmm. That's, in my mind, really helped her position in terms of prevailing against the other bidders. Mm -hmm. and, and given a different set of circumstances and uh, the requirement for different expertise, it might have worked out differently. But, mm -hmm. but where we're at now, I think she, she was the best choice. Mm -hmm. uh, did, were there any other follow-up questions from the committee or, or from the city? Um, no, not really. We just got, you know, just over logistics. I mean, we're just going back with and forth with purchasing on on the contract and um, getting that all, all squared away. But I mean, I know that Karen also felt that, Karen Roney also felt that her responses were extremely thorough. I mean, she laid everything out there, every step of, of what she's going to do and how she's gonna do it. So, did um, can't wait to get started. You have, do you have a feel at this point as to when the kickoff might be? I think it's going to be, well, I mean, it's, it depends on when purchasing gets the contract out to Annie. Um, I think it'll be pretty quickly. So, so it, uh, May, you think is... A, is uh, I do. I do. I think it'll be sometime this month. Okay, great. Any other questions for Nancy on this? No, well, good start. A lot of work. Looking forward to seeing how it all works out. Um, a, a couple items that um, we had as old business. Uh, one was the subcommittee report on the guidelines for the use of the Moser and Emerson funds. Katie did turn in um, some thoughts, which I think have uh, all been sent out to mm -hmm. um, the board. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope you got a copy as well, Councilman. Um, but because she is not here tonight, I'd like to defer that um, for our next meeting in, in a couple, three weeks, and then she can be part of the discussion and help us through her thoughts on that. If that's, uh, if that's acceptable, can I um, get a show of hands? Okay, so we'll postpone um, that. Mark, I did notice that, you know, Katie had said as her, as her first thing that we should make a list and we have, and I will, I would like to bring that or or send that out before the next meeting before That's we discuss fine. it because we have a list with quotes, numbers. Do we have a list? So, um, and also, I did find out from Jim Golden that as of the end of end of 2020, the Mosher Funds balance is 509 that can be spent is 592,325 dollars and 43 cents. Mark, I didn't, I, I don't think I saw Kathy's thoughts. So if you want to share them, I'd be happy to. I'll send it out to, to you, Tim. Yeah. Katie's yeah, thoughts. Recall, sorry. Um, Councilman, the, the, the intent of this is just to try and create some structure within the advisory board uh, when we're dealing with such large sums that we have, have some protocols and some. Um, pre-stated guidelines so that, that we're acting responsibly and yep. in a fiduciary manner. I think it's a good idea. Um, so I'm going to push forward then. Uh, and, and this will also um, have uh, some implications for the Mosher and, and Emson funds, I guess. The little free libraries, um, uh, Kathy or Nancy, do you want to talk about, or do you, you may not even have anything new to report on that from from the uh, friends. 
they're still waiting for guidance from us in, in terms of where we would suggest putting these and then they'll act accordingly? Well, I think that, you know, that's probably a question that they have. I mean, I think they would do the entire thing if we want them to do that. And otherwise, you know, we can certainly suggest locations, but I guess I wasn't clear whether, you know, we were going to come up with locations or I was going to come up with locations and, and kind of hand them over and then they would fill them or if they had some ideas as well. Well, that's a good question because I don't think we ever, as a board decided how we were going to mm -hmm. handle that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was, it was as a delight that they wanted to step in and, in, um, mm -hmm. take some of the responsibility over for that, because that's, that's a great benefit to this board. Um, and being uh, generally responsible for it, I'm comfortable with them taking the lead in terms of where they want to put them. Uh, but I would hope that our board or the library would have um, some influence somewhere in that process if we wanted to recommend something else or um, wanted to provide some um, uh, different thoughts on some of the selections that we would have input into that process. Do you think I think originally we had tabled it slightly because when we were talking about it earlier, nothing was really reopened yet because we were talking about an indoor location mm -hmm. and most of the facilities were not yet reopened. So I think it's a good time to start that conversation again with the friends. Okay, because this might, might be just a naive question on my part, but do they know all the choices that that um, might benefit the um, people that need to service more in the community? Um, do they have a feel for that? Or are they looking for input? Because I, I think know. you were going to talk to some people in the city, weren't you, Nancy? To, to you talk. know, I mean, we, we had mentioned some things. We had mentioned the Salud Clinic. We had mentioned the Hour Center, et cetera. So, you know, it, I think I just need to communicate with the friends about this and see if they'd like me to make those contacts or if they'd rather do it themselves. Is, it, okay. is there a youth advisory board that I'm remembering with the city? Mm -hmm. That might be a, a place where we could also get some ideas in terms yeah. of you know where teens are hanging out. We don't end up with a lot of teen materials for these little free libraries, but um, yeah. they might still have some good ideas on that though. I think having, you know, having had them, our old little free libraries destroyed and repaired three times, we were hoping for an indoor location, so, which is going to be, you know, a better, a better deal now that a lot of indoor spots are now open, yeah. which they were not before. I can certainly broach this at the next friends meeting or else. Um, yeah, can you, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just grateful that they're willing to step in and take a lead role on this. And I think that's wonderful. I just hope that they wouldn't shut out the library nor the board, this board from making suggestions as they proceed down. The they road. haven't to this point yet um, had a lot of access to their materials to do anything with them. Um, that should be happening shortly. The garage, is be, the garage area has been construction central and the friends things, the friends stuff, their stash of books was all moved out kind of into the open areas, out of the rooms they were working on in the garage, covered with, even though it's in boxes, covered with just a ton of dust. So I've been told by the, by the project manager that they're gonna use their big blowers and blow all the dust off of the friends boxes and clean them up. And at that point, I think the friends will be able to access their materials so they can actually do something with them. So they've not been allowed for the most part in that part of the garage. When you go down there, there's sparks flying and lots of construction things. So we, we tended to stay away from the garage outside of just putting things down there. So um, it's a good time to reopen the conversation now because they'll actually be able to get to their materials pretty quickly. Okay, well, that sounds like it'd be a good time to talk about their, their views yep. on the Little Free Library and how we all manage this together going forward. Any other uh, 
questions on the little free library or the friends? No, just one question. Um, would it be possible also to maybe have uh, contact people that they could get in touch with for say Salute Clinic or the mm -hmm. Hour Center mm -hmm. so that they, they would have someone to contact and say, hey, we'd like to set this up. I have, I have contacts with both. You have contacts, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's, we, that would be a good time to pass it on then. Okay, and those were just two things that we had brought up as possibilities. So definitely if they have other ideas, yeah, those would also be welcome. I had taken um, several boxes over to a housing authority site just because they had requested before, but then they didn't want any more, so. Yeah. so. Well, that uh, this may actually be another outlet for the friends in terms of um, reducing their inventory of books rather than just selling it to a um, a discount wholesaler. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can actually put it back into use for the community. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be positive as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, having said all that, I'm going to start uh, the section on new business. And the big issue here is the electronic participation policy. Um, do you wanna brief us on what you were thinking, Nancy, or what the city's thinking? Actually, this is not something that I came up with. This is something that was set out to all boards and commissions from the city. It's just basically saying it's okay to do what we've been doing for months, which is, which is meeting online rather than in person. So I sent it out so everybody could look through it. Um, at some point, it will need to be signed. Um, basically, it's just it's just a formality that they need to have on file. Signed, signed as a board or signed individually? I think it's just signed as a board. I have it. Okay. Any questions on the policy? Um, I was just curious, we switched from WebEx to Zoom. Is that like citywide or did we do that for some particular purpose? Yeah, in WebEx, I mean, there are, there are different reasons, but WebEx is, is used um, for the most part for some of the larger meetings because you can host a lot more folks, a lot more people in a room and, and Zoom is a little bit easier to set up and easier to manipulate for smaller groups. So um, we use Teams, we use Zoom, we use WebEx, we use all of them in different instances. So the platform doesn't matter, whatever we're consenting to is, okay. No, it's just that you can meet electronically. Got it. I was curious about the mention of taking votes by roll call. I'm trying to remember that. How do some of the other boards handle? Voting. I think it probably depends on the size too, but I mean, I've been to do other meetings where it is a roll call vote, where they will, you know, call everyone's name and ask for an individual vote. And most of them that are smaller meetings like this, we all go like this. Okay, okay. So. Well, I would propose that we keep doing what we're doing unless we're in violation of something that we're misunderstanding with the policy. Um, and, See how it rolls out. See if we get challenged. Um, so is uh, anything else on the uh, electronic participation policy? Mm -hmm. Okay, that, uh, that takes care of the um, prepared agenda. I did save that one question for the councilman for this part of the uh, meeting and and mine is more like just a inquiring minds kind of want to know sort of thing but i i did take advantage of um the opportunity you mentioned i guess it was last meeting or last meeting when we were all together that uh you had mentioned that the the council was going to um talk about the cultural center mm -hmm. and the cultural center proposal and I look, I, you know, I wanted to dial in because I know um, you had um, expressed thoughts that it might be great to combine the library's feasibility once, once we're so far along with the cultural center. And maybe that does make sense. Um, 
what surprised me, I think, in, in all of that was that um, I think the um, cultural center numbers, and there were different, different looks, were $150 million up front. That might have been the full blown plan and $10 million a year of support. Does that sound like I'm in the ballpark? Yeah. And I was just curious how, how that um, will actually occur when the poor library can't get <laughs> its, its meager budget each year. I mean, that, that's a level of, of substance and, and sustainability that I just haven't seen come out of the community. And I was curious as to your take on that. Yeah. Um, well, so can I, can I just ramble about a couple aspects of it? I just did. So you can, uh, first of all, I'm glad you had a chance to watch the presentation. Hopefully you took some notes on, um, you know, in the spirit of an after action review of what happened, what did you learn and how do you get better going forward? There are some, there are some things to learn from that presentation that you'd want to make certain that you, you, you took into whatever presentation it gets made uh, when we have a feasibility study ready to present. Here are my observations. In that presentation, there was no context provided whatsoever to help understand this is a, this is a proposal that actually makes assumptions about locations and surrounding environments. No reference to that. There was no reference to the a year's worth of visioning work that occurred that set the stage for locating uh, or for proposing or envisioning where this be would be located. Uh, there was no, there was no reference at all to what was a extensive discussion about parking capacity and facilities between a performing arts facility, a university or post-secondary campus um, and, uh, and the performing arts center. So, the, so we got into this discussion immediately about parking which took us right off, off focus. That even the agenda that night was sequenced wrong, bad, badly, poorly, uh, uh, non-strategically. Uh, there was a, we had a transportation issue on the agenda. We should have addressed that first because we would have addressed a whole bunch of parking issues before we ever got to the feasibility study. So, you know, I think it goes on from there. Um, I think there were a number of things that, you know, you know, in a, in like, what would you do differently? A number of things. So. Pay attention to those things as you think about the library feasibility study. Context is going to matter, history, et cetera, number one. Number two, you're right, Mark. It's a, the, 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 the study is, is a two-phase, or the proposal is a two-phase project if it gets approved. Um, uh, the, the first phase would be a $105 million project uh, capital cost. As you recall, there were five areas of decision making that the consultants identified that that had to be addressed in the in, in considering the whole proposal one was um uh be, after you get to after you get deal with the capital issues governance of the property management of the property uh uh, uh the business plan that goes along with the property the fundraising that would be required to fill in the gaps um and then on and then um kind of the ongoing maintenance and, and relationship to, to other properties like the Stewart Auditorium. So um, in my opinion, there should have been some, a, a little more detail or, or at least hints about the, the thinking about what, who would come around those issues? Uh, what did they, rec who did they, who would they recommend being involved with those decisions on what kind of a time frame? Right. So there was a whole bunch that was left unsaid that that should have been added to this. And, um, you know, we, we, the, the meeting probably ran longer than it should have. I don't know. It was just uh, so there's a bunch left. In addition, there was really no specific ask of the council. This is what we would like you to do. So a motion was made to accept the proposal and investigate it. I don't even know what that means to investigate it. Um, it's like, oh, are you kidding me? 
Um, so going into this, there should it should have been laid out, in my opinion, where um, here's the proposal. Here are over this kind of a time frame. Here are the net, here are the six steps that we think the city ought to consider going through to give serious consideration to the hard and thoughtful work that's been done on this feasibility study. Now, I will tell you this, Mark, just in terms of the scope and breadth of it, I don't think anybody assumed going in that the city is going to bite, or swallow that. That's an elephant, right? The city's not going to eat the elephant by itself. The city's going to take bites of it. But uh, Lapai, the Longmont Performing Arts Initiative, it's going to, they're going to have to step up. They're going to have to have a capital campaign to raise uh, a, a big chunk of the capital on the front end of this. Uh, what I've said, uh, I've said it repeatedly. I will say it again. Um, if there's a point in time where I could just shut up as well, uh, if, it's, if it's not going to make sense. But what I've said to the performing arts folks is, you, because, because we have the library feasibility study in the queue now, and, and maybe by the end, what I've said is, and maybe this, maybe this works, and maybe it doesn't. I've said, I think by the end of June, we would have uh, the second phase of the library study ready to present. Now, maybe that's too soon. But, that's the, but until tonight, I didn't know where we stood in terms of the timing. Uh, the June is when I suggested. What I did say is, before they get any further, um, they need that Lapai needs to come together with Harold Dominguez, Tony uh, Chacon, and others, uh, Joni, and others who, who, who are involved in planning, um, and, and get real clear on what does land acquisition going to look like, you know, who owns property in, in the area that was proposed, um, and what's the strategy just for acquiring the land, uh, is explore the possibility of investors. It sits in an opportunity zone. Uh, are there relationships within Lapai that would bring a developer in potentially to make a huge investment right in that area? How much of a bite do they need the city to take in terms of the capital campaign? And, and the answer to that question sets up the potential connection with the library feasibility study. Because what I've said is, first of all, they're not going to be ready to be on a ballot. If the, if the, if the city's going to, going to, going to uh, assume debt to come up with a big pile of cash to invest in a, in a performing arts facility, that's going to require a vote of the public. It's, it's impossible in my mind that they could, they, they, there's no way they're going to get the five areas of decision making that, that they have to get clear completed. They'd have to have it done by the first week in August for the council to approve a ballot question in November of 2021. That is just not going to happen. So I think they've accepted the likelihood that there's no way a ballot question or a question would get on a ballot till November of 2022. So then I've said, Imagine this, you're on the ballot asking the public uh, to, to create debt to invest in a performing arts center on the same November ballot where the Friends of the Library have a question on the ballot asking to create a library district. I thought the last thing you want to do is be on the ballot at the same time as the Friends of the Library and not have a really coordinated approach to this. Because if there's one asset in this community that gets the highest ratings year after year in terms of the most highly valued amenity and service in, this, in the city, it's the library. So if I was going to place a bet on whose who's ballot question is going to win favor with the community, I know where I'd place my bet. It would be if, and, and, I, and by the way, I, with them, I've said there's a whole bunch of if-then scenarios here. If the library feasibility study produces a recommendation to you to either create a dedicated sale tax, sales tax and keep the library inside the municipality. Or here's the other if then, if there's a recommendation that it becomes a, a separate district, you're going to have to deal with that, right? I'll, I'll be as supportive as, as, as you want me to be, but you're going to have to make that judgment whether or not you want to go to council with the proposal to create a library district. Because here's what I've said. If that's the scenario, then the council is going to have to make a decision to put a ballot, a question on the ballot. If the city does that, then what the Lapai group ought to do is approach the city to say, if the public approves that ballot question, could we get on that same ballot and, and would the city council dedicate the money that goes right now to the library, dedicate that part of the general fund to servicing debt 
for the city share of the capital campaign for a, for a performing arts facility. Now you have two questions on a ballot. One is, would the city approve the creation of a library district with whatever, with whatever sales tax or, or property tax re, would be required to, to meet the budgetary requirements for both for construction and operations and et cetera? And separate ballot question, if ballot question one passes, would the, would the public approve the dedication of that sales tax or the general fund currently going to the library to cover, to finance $60 million, just pick a number of debt as the city share of the capital campaign for the performing arts facility, right? You could have two questions. You could get two amenities for one, for one tax increase. And the probability of the, the library succeeding with that, I think way better than, than, than a performing arts facility or simply certainly better than two tax increases, right? So there's a whole, there's some if then scenarios, right? So um, it, it, it makes, it's complicated, probably more complicated than some people would want it to be. But I, but I do think, and by the way, I'll add one more, I got a briefing this morning on Saturday, starting this Saturday, the museum will begin a public engagement process um, to, to present to the public where the status of our thinking about a strategic plan for the museum. You, you saw that the, the Stewart found, uh, Family Foundation donated a million dollars to the library just recently. The Stewart Family Foundation, I'm told, has more money to donate to the, I said to the library, to the museum. They want to know if they're going to put more money into the museum, what's, what are we going to do with it? What's the longer term vision and strategy from the museum? So the second part of that whole proposal, Mark, right, which was a smaller 500 seat venue, I know that discussion is going to be part of the strategic planning for the museum. So the potential is that we could go to the public with a, with kind of a three-part pretty grand strategy. Um, if you recommended a library district, if the city council accepts it, if the public approves it, if the public would then were to, to approve the, 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 the service of debt without a tax increase, for the performing arts facility, um, you could lay that out where the city gets the, the library, you know, state of the art library, a performing arts center, and an updated museum for for one tax increase um, to support the high most the most valued asset and resource in the community, the library. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I, I appreciate your um, laying it out. I mean, I just it just seems. Well, one, it seems bold. It's 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 very bold. It's it's very audacious, audacious for the community. But it's also more money than I've seen thrown around for civic investments. And um, well, the city's not going to. I, I, I just, just understand don't know this. How that's going to get on? There's there's no way that the, the, the city of Longmont's going to come up with 105 million dollars to build that facility. And that's just the first half or the first two thirds. Well, but, the, but, but I, but I'll be surprised if, in fact, I'm going to, I will strongly support the city coming up with some of it. If we can put together the kind of plan that the community would approve, right? Not all of it. There's going to have to be private sector investment in this for it to work. Different from the library. I don't think we need private sector investment to make, the, to, to do what we need to do for the library. Well, I don't know. There, there's been models put forward for the library that has has a, a hybrid component between the library and um, some retail access or something like that. Where uh, that's a that's a different. You're talking about a mixed use property, that, like yeah, that retail on the first floor, yeah. and then the library sits on the second and third floor or something. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't. I. Yeah, it's hard for me to imagine to put you in a position or the friends of the library to have to wage a capital campaign to cover the cost of construct of adding 35%, you know, or however many square feet it would be even to get to average in terms of, in terms of capitating the square footage for the library. I, I, just, I think it would have to be a district before that, before that question bubbles up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just curious. I mean, I found, I found that that was, 
as I say, a very ambitious um, study and um, general acquiescence to the kind of numbers that were being thrown around. And I, um, having sat through some of the the agony over the budgets and support for the library, I just found that um, refreshing and startling. Well, there's a lot, there's a long way to go, Mark, before, before we've settled on this, but <clears throat> um, like I said, I think, I think the, the, it's like swallowing an elephant and how many bites of it is the city going to take versus other private sector investment and, you know, what, what comes from a capital campaign. But I don't see anything on, if there's going to be items on a ballot, I, I can't, it's hard for me to imagine anything on a ballot before November of 2022. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, just so you know, too, our, we did include Kim, the library, the museum director, rather, on our interview panel for the consultant and hope that she'll continue with our core group as we uh, work with the consultant moving forward. Because I think there are a lot of, um, synergies there to be found. So. Yeah, hopefully it, uh, it'll all get worked out. That's, uh, uh, that's all I had. Um, anything else um, that the board wants to talk about or council wants to talk about before we move to adjourn? Next uh, meeting is set for May 24th, just down the road here. So we'll be back at it in three weeks. Uh, having said that, I will move to adjourn at uh, 7.52. Thank you all. See ya. Thanks. Thank you.